We're going to work through a sp particular special case now of motion on, with acceleration, and that is one where the acceleration is a constant, just a number. In other words, it does not change over time like a function. This is a particularly important special case because it happens to be what we experience due to gravity here on Earth. We can't justify this just yet, uh, but we will come to talk about that the acceleration here on Earth is a rather constant, minus 9.8 meters per second squared. This number, sometimes it gets the designation of little g. So g is a, a number that depends you know, basically be, being on the surface of the Earth. If we were basically anywhere on Earth, g is about the same number. Sometimes it's a little bit more, sometimes a little less, depending if you're high or low in altitude. But all objects fall with a roughly constant acceleration. And like I said, we can't justify this just now. But uh, it, is, it is a roughly good approximation that it's a constant. And it will be up to Isaac Newton later to tell us about how apples falling from a tree allowed him to derive what this this uh, acceleration g was going to turn out to be. I should point out also g in the British system turns out to be about 32 feet per second squared, although it's more common to use 9.8. In fact, 9.8 is close enough to 10 that for many calculations we'll end up just using that g is approximately 10. So now why is this a particularly important special case for us? Because we should remember that a is the derivative with respect to time of velocity. And if we're now saying that that's a constant, well, this has an implication. So that will lead to dv equals a times dt. We'll just multiply both sides by dt. And then b of t, the antiderivative, will be found by integrating dv or integrating a times dt. And that antiderivative will then equal a t with some constant. How did I do that? Well, if this a is a constant, it pulls out of the integral. It doesn't depend on time. And the integral, integral of dt is just t. And you can always slip an extra constant on here. Because if I took a derivative of this again, took dv dt, then the derivative of this term would just be a, and the derivative of this term would be 0. So I would end up back to where I was starting at. So if we like, um, this, this ind indicates a velocity that's going to be growing with time plus some initial velocity at time t equals 0. It also means that the position as a function of time will equal the integral or antiderivative of v of t. And if I integrate that expression there, it becomes 1 half at squared plus v naught t plus x naught, where x naught is another constant of integration. So there are two expressions here. Which are important for you to know. Assuming constant acceleration, then the position as a function of time will be quadratic. It will be 1 half at squared, a is acceleration, plus v naught t plus x naught. And the velocity as a function of time will equal a t plus v naught. a is acceleration. x naught is the initial position at time t equals 0. v naught 
is initial velocity at time t equals zero. In other words, if I plug in t equals zero to this expression, because it's a function as a function of time, this first term is zero, and v naught is that velocity that would exist at time t equals zero. It's the initial condition. In the same way, if I plug in times zero here for this function, this term and this term are both zero, and x naught ends up being the position that is there at that initial time. 